the channel you want to listen to, Dover Community Radio. Well, another gentleman I've met now at the um, Armed Forces Day here in Pensister Gardens is Ian Barber. Now, Ian, uh, you served, I believe, in Palestine uh, during the uh, war. Yes, what was your memories like? Yes, that's right. Um, well, of course, we, we came in at the tail end, uh, by reason of my, my age, and um, we were sent out to Palestine and Egypt and uh, um, Iraq and uh, stations out there to train the air crew for the Japanese war. But, of course, after we'd been out there just about six months, the Japanese war finished, and there was no real further need for us. Uh, at that stage, of course, the uh, uh, the Jews began to act up a bit, and um, we found ourselves pretty well confined to camp for most of the most of the time. If we went out, we had to go out under escort of garries with uh, with um, personnel with guns to protect us. It was all right in the first six months. We used to get down to the beach at at Tel Aviv, um, and it was it was quite good. But uh, as I say, after that six months, everything sort of closed down, and basically we were just sort of protecting the camps and uh, and letting the um, uh, letting the uh, service run down out there. Um, it was quite quite interesting. Uh, various uh, aspects of it. I was in the flying control tower in the airfield in the flying control tower and it was our responsibility to give instructions to the aircraft as they came in to land or take off and uh, give them a weather a weather uh, forecast, their barometric pressure before they landed so as they could uh, alter their altimeter and um, as I say the uh, pilots were training basically for the Japanese war. There was one quite funny thing. Um, the Dead Sea of course is below sea level and the pilots who were training those, I've forgotten what they were called now, sort of staff pilots, they used to delight in taking the trainees out there and then of course as soon as they flew over the Dead Sea the altimeter would drop out of existence and of course everybody would panic apart from the experienced pilot who knew what was going on so a little sort of things like that used to happen but basically it was uh, it was a bit boring after a bit as I say we could find to camp most of the time and, and uh, could only go out under, under supervision there was there was quite a few nasty things happened in Jerusalem the, a couple of Air Force personnel were gunned down in the street and um, of course there were three army sergeants who were hung outside the army camp at Serapan, which was quite a significant time. So although it wasn't a, a great theatre of war, um, it was still fairly important. Um, we also used to track illegal ships who were coming in from the European theatre, of course, with Japanese uh, migrants who wanted to come and live in the land that they claimed was theirs. Um, we had a couple of what they call VHFDF homers. Uh, we used to take bearings on aircraft as they, as they circled over the illegal uh, ship's convoy and then phone that bearing, that position, uh, through to Jerusalem, and then the Navy used to go out and pick up the illegal ships. Of course, inevitably, the Navy were going up their climbing, uh, their climbing wires, climbing ropes, uh, to pick up the illegals long before we found the position through. They were way ahead of us. So, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, was basically what what we had to do, and then of course after after two and a half years in 1947, um, as I say, they were running down all the stations, and as people got posted home, what they called tour X tour expired because you were out there for two years. Um, they just didn't replace personnel, and then three months after I left, 
um, we basically got thrown out of Palestine by the Jews. So nothing really to do with me. I got out before it happened. Would you actually um, like to go back and serve again? Or would, um... Well, I have been back as a, as, a, uh, as a tourist on a couple of occasions. And um, it's, it was quite interesting because uh, uh, being a Catholic, I, I'm very interested in the Holy Land, of course, Jerusalem and Nazareth, all those names mean more to me now, having served out there when I hear them at Mass each Sunday. Um, and I had the good luck to go to Midnight Mass in Bethlehem during the time I was out there. Uh, they still have Midnight Mass out there, but of course, with the security now, it's, uh, it's very closely uh, controlled. Um, yes, it's all right to go back for a visit, but I don't think I'd like to go and live out there again. No, no. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks for your time, You're and uh, nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.